the seller of this Xbox Series X said that he paid over $400 in total for a shop to repair the HDMI port. Unfortunately, the shop had to fix it more than once. And even after paying a total of $400, a month later, it broke again and it still doesn't work. Let's first power it up and see if it works for me. Then we'll get it torn apart and see what's going on. As with most of these repairs, there's a lot more to the story. You can pause to read if you want. I've got it all plugged in. Let's see if it starts up. So far, so good. And see if we get anything on the screen. And there is just nothing. No amount of wiggling or unplugging and plugging back in. It's just totally dead. As far as the signal. Obviously, the Xbox does start up, so that's good news. Let's get this thing taken apart and see what the repair shop did wrong. So the first thing I noticed looking at this HDMI port is... It's pretty bent up uh, on this metal piece right here. And most of the time when I see that, I kind of assume it's because somebody's been jamming a cable in or I don't know, maybe twisting a cable. I'm not sure why it would be that bent. So I'm not sure what we're gonna find here. I'm not sure we can blame this part on the repair shop though. There's one way to find out. Let's get it taken apart. And of course, first things first, let's see how all the cables and screws and everything look. We're not missing any screws so far. That's good news. I will say these screws are in here pretty tight, some of them. Better than not being there at all, but we don't need to tighten them down this much. One thing that's nice, especially if you're charging $250 for an HDMI repair, is to at least brush things off. This fan, while it's not the worst amount of dirt I've ever seen, it's pretty dirty. It wouldn't hurt to just give it a little, a little brush off while you're doing the job. Yeah, same thing in the case. You know, there's some some caked on dirt, but it's not horrible, but still it'd be easy to just brush that off real quick. And same thing here. It looks like all the screws are at least here. So that's always nice. All right, and now I can remove this top board. Just give it a little look over. And don't see any problems here. So far everything has Look pretty good. There's nothing that's been broken or missing from the repair shop that fixed this, so that's the good news. All right, so the thermal paste doesn't look amazing, but I mean, it's fine. It does have the clamp, which is good. And here is the HDMI port, and I already see something strange. There's like tape right there. This is getting interesting. Here we go. Whoa, that is a lot of thermal paste. I'm known for putting a lot of thermal paste on stuff, but <laughs> that's a lot of thermal paste. Holy cow. Definitely not the perfect amount here. To be fair though, it is better to put too much than not enough. And honestly, even though I would consider this too much, it doesn't actually hurt anything, so this is definitely better than not having enough, so. And I'm just kind of inspecting the bottom side of this board for anything that looks abnormal, and I don't really see anything. Everything looks pretty good. I mean, except for the HDMI port. It's The board is kind of, there's burn flux on the board, which, I mean, it's fine. It's not going to cause a problem, but looks kind of ugly. Okay, let's turn this over and get this thing under a microscope and have a look at that HDMI port. Now that I say that, actually, I'm gonna remove this thermal paste. There's so much here that it's gonna get everywhere on my repair bench and all over my equipment if I just leave it. So is that, is that the old thermal paste? They didn't put new thermal paste over old thermal paste, did they? It's gonna, it's gonna be really hard to tell just judging on the fact that some of it is chunky and some of it is not. And they might have just put, they might have just not cleaned up the old thermal paste from around the chip. I think the paste on the chip itself is all new and not this old stuff. Now, just based on the look and feel of this, all of this is like the crusty old thermal paste. And I feel like maybe some of this is too. So, I don't know. I, I think maybe the repair shop that did this might have just threw on some new thermal paste and didn't bother to clean off the old thermal paste. I can't say that 100%. I don't know for sure, for sure. If that's the case, 
That's ridiculous. No repair shop should be doing that. Take the extra five minutes, clean off the old thermal paste, and then just put the new thermal paste on. Only reason to not do it is just because all you care about is making money, which is important if you're running a repair shop, but not more important than doing the job right. Okay, now that we have all that old thermal paste cleaned off, now let's have a look at that HDMI port under a microscope. Okay, and let's see. Yeah, I can already see a problem. Don't know if it's the only problem, but this... Oh, wait. That... <laughs> that pin just was broken off. Let's check these other pins. Ah, good. Okay, all the other pins are good. It also looks like there's maybe some bridge solder here. Let me clean this off. We gotta see what's going on in there. Didn't really help because I brushed a bunch of the thermal paste in here. So I don't think there's bridge solder there. But the fact that this pin is just totally broken off means that we need to replace this port and also clean up all that thermal paste mess that I just made. Oh yeah, and there's totally tape around it. I'm just, I'm not sure what they would have thought that would do. It doesn't need tape, it just needs to be done correctly. Weird. Okay, once we get this old port off, we can also look at the condition of the pads and see if there's any problems there. So we've got our new HDMI port and I've already prepped it. I took my iron and added some fresh solder right on the pins. That'll help this solder stick to the solder on the board once I replace it. So what I'm gonna do next is use my hot air soldering station and heat up this port from the bottom side. I'm gonna heat up these mounting pins and also heat up this area right here. This is where the 19 small pins are on the other side of the board. So heat that all up. That will allow the solder to melt and this port will just drop right out and then we can install the new port. One of the things that I made a mistake with in the past on these Xbox Series X HDMI ports is there's these little pins right here that solder down to the board. And some of the time what I've done is not heat up this part of the board quite enough. And so it'll just all heat all along here, but I won't heat this part. And so that will just make the port kind of stick right there and not want to let go. So now what I do is just kind of go in a circle all around here and that makes it so all of the solder melts, including the solder that sticks these little pins down to the board in the front here. There we go. That port just fell right out. Okay, now we need to inspect these pads. So we'll do that under the microscope. Okay, so this is what we're working with. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit so we can inspect these pads really well. So this is the pad we were having trouble with. It's a little strange that there's copper showing right here. I'm not sure why that is. So I'm gonna add some solder to that, but other than that, all the rest of these pads look good. So I feel pretty good about just putting a new port on here. I'm gonna add some fresh solder here to these pads and then we'll install the new port. Okay, now that we have the new port installed, let's take a look under the microscope and check out those pins. All right, and the new port looks pretty good. These pins over here, some of them are a little bit off of the pad, but close enough that it's not a big deal. And you can see that these ones are basically right on it. So once we start getting over here, I think some of these pins are bent just slightly. And you can see that these did not solder all the way down. So that's fine. I'm just gonna come through with my small iron and solder each of these pins down just to make sure they're all soldered on very solidly. So we'll come in and flux it up then we'll solder them on with my soldering iron and then we should be done. Now when I do this, I add just a little bit of solder to my iron because I don't want to make too many bridges here. It's very easy to bridge these pins. It's not the end of the world when you do, but it's also nice 
when we don't. Can't tell if I bridged these two over here. It looks like maybe I did. I'm just gonna come in with my larger iron, clean that up. Send that over there. All right. Now I'm gonna clean those up and we'll have a look to make sure they're all soldered on solidly. Okay, and here's our look with it all cleaned up. Just gonna double check each one of these pins. I mean, I can already tell they're good, but it doesn't hurt to double check sometimes, especially in a case like this where the port's been messed up. Okay, we're all good there. But first, we need to apply the perfect amount of thermal paste. Obviously. There we go. Now it's hard to know exactly what happened with the repair shop and this repair. I think what might have happened is they installed a replacement HDMI port and that one pin, it could have been just like cracked or something, but I have seen HDMI ports where one pin has a disconnection down inside the port. So it could have been just a faulty HDMI port or it is possible that it wasn't soldered on quite right, and so they had to re-solder it and kind of bend it over, and they could have broken it in the process. I'm guessing that they added that tape, thinking that it, for some reason, needed more pressure, which it might have, considering the fact that that one pin was broken. I have seen HDMI ports that are broken internally, and they're very difficult to diagnose, and sometimes I've ended up just replacing the port because I've checked everything else, and every once in a while that is the fix. Like I said, I don't know for sure that that's what happened in this case, but I think that's the most probable cause. Judging by the rest of the console, it looks like whoever did this is probably experienced, judging by the fact that there's not a bunch of broken or missing pieces. So I would guess that normally this repair shop is probably pretty good, but at the same time in this case, I think they really missed the boat, especially considering they made the customer pay around $400 for this fix and still blame the customer when, at least in this case, from my perspective, I don't think it was entirely the customer's fault. The bent up HDMI port definitely could have been, like the outside uh, metal case was bent. So that could have been the customer, but for sure the one pin that was broken was definitely not the customer's fault. Again, that's just my perspective based what I've seen. There's not really any way to know for sure what happened. All plugged in, let's see if it turns on. It does. Do we, oh, we already got a black screen, come on. And there we go. So the only thing keeping this Xbox Series X from working was that one single pin that was broken on the HDMI port. Unfortunately, the customer really paid for it on this one, and in my opinion, the repair shop should have fixed it at no charge. If you like this type of video and want to see me fix a special edition Xbox Series X, I'll put a link for that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix it. Thanks so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.